power of prayer and fasting. I think this is the very first time I am teaching this in this ministry. And I ought to have taught it there before. But may, may the Lord help us. But uh, it is your time now to, to really receive. I always love it when we do things by revelation or with revelation. And not just doing things as rituals. Not just doing things because they are done. It is different when you do something by understanding. And it is different when you just do something because you are told to do or you heard that people do this. So we know that many churches are doing prayer and fasting in this month of January and we do that every year. I wouldn't want you just to do it. They just do it because kuna a specific month. Lazima waifanya na wakati mungine kuna wale huifanya ni kama punishment. Mpaka anauliza jioni tafika sangapi six. Actually wanakuwa mpaka amenawa mikono anagojea six. Hamefungua chakula anagojea six. So it is not punishment. This is something we should do by understanding and do it in a, in a good way. Na siyo lazima sasa tukimaliza yu mwezi ya fasting. Tutengeneze bash moja kubwa ya kubreak that fasting. Bwana yesu wa sifiwe. So it is good to do something ukiwa na understanding. Ama ukielewa ni nini vizuri ambao naifanya. And I bless the Lord because today I have the chance to teach us about fasting. About prayer and fasting. And there are some people who say, now fasting was for the Old Testament. We are in the New Testament. You are not supposed to fast. There are some who even misquote scriptures to just show that in the New Testament, Jesus has done everything for them. So they do not need to do anything. But today I will teach us to see how fasting was in the Old Testament. And even in the New Testament, we must have an understanding. So that even as we fast, we know what fasting will do for us. And we know why God requires us to fast. So I want to begin by telling you this. It is not about if you will fast, but it is about when, when, when you should fast. So the question is not whether you should fast. The question should be when you should fast, not whether. Whether we must agree as I shall show you that all of us need, actually not want, we need to fast. We need to fast. We need to fast. And it is called prayer and fasting. You should note, number one, it is not only called fasting. It is not also called fasting and prayers. It is prayers and fasting. The order is very, very important. So those two things, they go hand in hand, praying and fasting. There are people who just pray and they never fast. Those people, there are some results they can no, never have in their lives. If you just pray, 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 but you never fast. Because there is something specific that fasting does for you. There are some people who also, they declare days of fasting, but they do not pray. That is what we call hunger strike. Now, we are doing those fastings from 6 to 6 p.m. Now, if you do not have time to pray, no need of fasting. So, you must create time. I did not say you must pray between 6 and 6 in the evening. But during this time of fasting, one of the things you must do and take time and make time is times of prayer. Times of prayer. So fasting alone does not do. It is prayer and fasting. Or prayer with fastings. Prayer and fastings. Can we begin in the book of Matthew and see Matthew 6 verse 5. This is Jesus. This is the someone on the mountain. He was teaching his disciples many things. One of the things he taught them is about prayer. So we, let's see how prayer and uh, fasting is related. Because these things, they go hand in hand. So Jesus told them, and when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrite. So he is telling them, and when you pray. So I told you, it is about when you pray. Not if you will pray, but when you pray. So he is telling them, number one, he is beginning by, when you pray, the, you shall not be like, so he is, number one, telling them how they should not pray. When you pray, you should not do this. You should not pray like this. When you pray, when you pray. So it is about when. You pray. When you pray. So he continues and tells them, you shall not be like the hypocrites for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets that they may be seen by men. Assuredly I say to you, they have their reward. Verse 6. But you, when you pray, go into your room. So number one, he began by when you pray, you should not do this. But now, the next one is now teaching you what you should do when you are praying. When you pray, 
you do this. You get into a room and when you have shut your door, pray to your father who is in the secret place and your father who sits in the secret will reward you when you pray. What does the next verse say? He continues. And when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathen do when you pray. So today I'm now going to teach you about when you fast. It is still in the same chapter. Let's go to the next. Let's go to the next. The next. Thank you. Moreover, when you fast. So after teaching them how they should pray and when you pray, he continues and tells them when you fast. So in, that, in other words, these things go hand in hand. So if you know how to pray, you now need to know how to fast. When you pray and then he tells them, when you fast, do not be like the hypocrite. So, anatumia the same patterns in Azama Ombi. Kwa Ombi alianza na kuambia, when you pray, do not do this. Na hapa amianza, when you fast, do not do this. So in other words, he is like likening prayer and fasting. He is comparing them and likening them. You see, with a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear to men to be fasting. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. The next verse. But you, when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face. So he is telling them, number one, when you pray, do not do this. And then he teaches you, now this is what you should do when you pray. Then in the, in the area of fasting, he uses the same pattern. When you fast, do not do this. But when you fast, do this. So prayer and fasting are all important. And it is about when you should pray, not whether you should pray. It is about when you should fast and not whether you should fast. So fasting is something very important. And we must all know that fasting is very important. Now, what is the main work of fasting? That's where we will dwell today. What is the main responsibility of fasting? Because we are talking about the power of fasting. What will fasting do for you? What will fasting do for you? What is the power in prayer and fasting? What is the importance of prayer and fasting? Why is it that fast prayer and fasting is, will do things that prayer alone cannot do? Why is prayer and fasting important? And I will give you one answer that we will, we will study today. Is that the main work for fasting is humbling yourself. If you are writing, you can write that. Fasting humbles yourself. It humbles self. Fasting humbles self. Fasting. It humbles you. It keeps you humble. Fasting humbles you. I will show you the scriptures. You know, I always tell you I want to teach you using scriptures. So, I will show you how Fasting humbles us. And how men were humbled or they humbled themselves by fasting. That is the main work of fasting. Now why do you need to be humbled? Why do you need to be humbled? Now God in his wisdom knew that man needs to be, or man, men need to humble themselves. Actually not God humbling you. Not men humbling you. It is about you humbling yourself. God knew that men must humble themselves. And because he knew they must humble themselves, God knew that they need fasting. Because only fasting can do that kind of humbling. And you know it is God who created us and he knows us. That is why he is saying, like Jesus was telling Peter, pray that you may not fall into temptation. God knows if you fail to pray, you will fall into temptation. Because he knows how man is made. And if a man is not praying, they will fall into temptation. So God tells them to pray that they may not fall into temptation. So God knows how we are wired. He knows how proud men naturally are. And he knows that every man needs to humble himself or herself. And he knows that the only thing that can bring that kind of humbling is fasting. There is nothing that humbles a man more than fasting. Fasting is the, the greatest thing that humbles a man. Fasting. So God knew that is why the Bible says that men always ought to pray. If you are a man and you have to succeed in life, you have to pray. So in the same manner, God knows that if men have to live in a life full of humility, they must fast. They must fast. Why do you need to be humbled? 
I will give you an answer also. You are your greatest enemy. Many people think that the devil is their greatest enemy. Many people think that people out there, mpaka kuna watu wengine ukiangalia social media, they are fighting with no no one every time. Oh, my enemies, oh, eh, those are, walikuwa wamesema sitaona huu mwaka, wale ambao walifikiria sitaona mwamwezi. Many people they think when we come, they think that they are, their most enemies are outside them. But I want to tell you that if you can be able to manage the enmity or the enemy in you, the enemies out there cannot be able to overcome you. Your greatest enemy is yourself. That, it's, it's that what we call self. Eh? You see self. Self. Hello? Now, that self needs to be humbled. If it is not humbled, you know Jesus said in Matthew, thank you, 23 verse 12, and whoever exalts himself will be humbled. And he who humbles himself will be exalted. So God knows if men, they lift themselves up, they will have to be humbled. But he says, if any man humbles himself, then they will be exalted. So anytime God tells you to humble yourself, it's because he wants to exalt you. But let me tell you, and that is why at Wazungu and Asemaga, pride comes before a fall. Anytime you uplift yourself, what is awaiting you is a downfall. Is a degradation. But anytime you bring yourself, you know someone who is on the ground can only come up. But imagine about that someone who has put himself up there. Imagine Paka Israel Kamalek up an example and he told them, if you go to a party or you go to some place, don't sit at the front seat. Sit back there. Because if you are back there, you will be brought here. Because when the wakati mkubu wa mekuja, alie kualika, ah, mbono umeka nyuma, kuja ukai hapa. But he, he says, if you come and sit here, alafu kukue kulikuwa na wageni wengine sasa wa hejima, imagine ukikuja kutolewa hapa, unapelekwa, alafu unajua, hizi viti zinakuwa zimebakishwa hivyo, alafu sasa hizi za hapo nyuma zimejaa zote. So hile kiti sasa iko vaka, iko pale. So sasa unakuja unatolewa hapa, unashikuwa vizuri mkono. Unaenda unapelekwa pale. Angalia hiyo shemi yote. But do you know that that is what many of us are doing in life? Ah, sisi ni wale watu wanapenda kujiweka. Watu wengine kwanza ukawangalia kwa life zao za social media. Kwa Facebook. Zile, zile vitu wa, ah, ya, ya, ya. Unaweza ukafikiria huyo mtu. E, eh, na malaika. Wanaiswa. They have exalted them. It's not their, their real place. Unajua kuna tofauti ya your real place. Hello? Wastana bwana Yesu asifiwe. Acha ni acha ni 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 nisiingie ni upande huo kidogo. Lakini ni ni vizuri. Ni vizuri unakubali namba 1 hata mahali uko. Eh sio makosa kujikubali na kukuwa humble na ukubali mimi kwa saa hizi kwa ukweli nywele ya 1300 sitaweza. Unaona lakini kuna wakati utakuja nitawe? Eh sasa wewe umepatana na kijana wa wenyewe. Eh, alafu kijana tu hata yeye wanaanza kutafuta pesa. Na wewe umemwambia ushukagu nywele ya 1500. Mimi sina shida na ukishuku hata ya 5k, sina ubaya, lakini ile kitu najaribu kusema ni ya kwamba siku hizi especially many people are living fake lives. Wamejiweka hapo. Many of them hata wanaenda wanapigwa picha tu wananunua nyumba na huyo mtu hana nyumba. Gari, ama amuoni wanapigwa picha kila siku na Mercedes. Na na ni gani ingine? Ni V8 na Range Rover. But you know many of them it's not it's not true. Some of them baada hapo wataingia kwa kaviti zake. Na si ati ni kabaya lakini nasema about these people who exalt themselves. They exalt themselves so much. But their life, their real life is not equal to where they have placed them. The Bible is saying that those people who exalt themselves they will be brought down. But anyone who has brought himself down they will be and because men naturally, they always want to brag. They always want to put status pale kwa, kwa, kwa WhatsApp. Na atuambie, I am the most beautiful. Sisi I, I hope una nielewa. But kuna ile kakitu kila mtu anakuwa ganayo ya kutaka kuhu. Hei ya onekane akosawa. Unaona, hata akiambiwa kama sasa sisi ambao tumewa tuko na kibarua. So ablazima ujifunze kuambia mke wako kila siku. Ako smart. Hata wakati hauko shua. Lazima tu muambi. Na usipo muambia ni vita. Kusa munapata naturally watu kuna ile kitu wanataka ambiwe. Eh. Unaona kusifiwa. 
ni neta ya mwanadamu na Mungu alijua kwa sababu hiyo neta iko kwa mwanadamu isipokuwa humble then huyo mwanadamu mwanadamu atakuwa na shida so the bible says that whoever exalts himself he will be humbled but whoever humbles himself will be exalted now if you are here you are given a choice by the word of god either humble yourself and let god announce you or either announce yourself everywhere and then god denounces you the bible says in the bible says in the book of james chapter 4 verse 10 thank you humble yourself in the sight of the lord and he will lift you up sasa many of you have been making wrong prayers number one, never tell god to humble you that is the worst prayer you can do actually if god decides to answer that prayer utakuja hapa ukilia because if god decides to humble you so other than him doing it that is why he is telling you humble yourself so it is you who humble yourself hebu ambia your neighbor ndio asipatie mungu kazi ambayo si yake ambia jirani yako it is your responsibility to humble yourself so the bible says humble yourself in the sight of the lord and he will lift you up i choose to humble myself before god i choose to humble nani my own responsibility i will humble myself you see first peter chapter 5 verse 5 and 6 says likewise you younger people submit yourself to your elders yes all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility for god resists the proud but gives grace to the humble just stay there for a minute hapa especially naongelesha the younger people unajua younger people ni wale watu wanajitaka young and vibrant na wale wanasemaga it is our time you cannot tell me anything eh kwanza wakiesikia wanaambiwa na wazazi wanaonaga na sijui hiyo deception ya watu yangu every time wanafikiria wazazi wao ni mafala wanafikiria wazazi wao hawajui ati zile unajua wanafikiria wazazi wao waliishi kitambo zile siku sasa hizo vitu waziku lakini nataka nikwambie hakuna vitu mpya inakuja hii dunia vitu zinajirudia the same story unapea mzazi wako probably hata yalipeana the same story akipea mzazi wake hello ama ujawai enda kwa mzazi akakuangalia akacheka tu akashindwa sasa hii story unaniambia hii story nimeijua ninaijua for a very long time unaona hii hii story mimi ninaiju so the young people many times there is that feeling they always have we are in our time it was not like this in your time you do not know you cannot understand it is, eh that's a very pride that that's pride so humble yourself kwa watu wazee kama sisi bwana yesu asifiwe eh humble yourself to your elders eh be ma, submissive go, enda tu hapo nyuma tu kidogo tumalize eh submit yourself to elders yes all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility Ebu hubiria jirani yako mwambie be clothed with humility. Yaani mtu akikuona mavazi yako ni humility. Sio kale kanaruka mpaka hello mpaka maneno yako or are you telling me who are you? Be clothed with humility. Then the Bible says God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. Unajua afadhali Biblia iseme God does not give grace to the Resisting ina maanisha ni huyo mtu ore alienda kwa Mungu Mungu akamresist. Mungu hawezi resist Mungu mtu hajaenda kwake. So resisting means any proud person whenever they come to God, he resist. Alafu unajua resisting if unaendelea kuja it is something in a involve at a force. So God rejects you. He resists you. If you are proud, he resists you. He resists you and he says Ah, but he gives grace to the to the humble grace grace i am going to teach about the grace this month one of the sundays in this month grace because what we need this year is grace to do the things that we are going to do so he gives grace to the humble wale ambao wanaonekana ni kama hawawezi ni kama he gives them grace you are here you need grace humble yourself humble yourself how many people need grace here the key is humbling yourself so all knows men need to be humble now in leviticus chapter 16 verse 29 oh uh uh-huh. yes it's verse 29 verse 29 you you know god is speaking to the children of israel verse 29 29 29 29 God is speaking to the children of Israel and he has given them one day in a year 
This is the day they were supposed it was called the atonement day. Nile siku walikuwa wanatoa sacrifice zao, the sin sacrifice. Walikuwa na sacrifice mara moja kwa mwaka kwa sababu ya dhambi zao. Now that day was not just a sacrifice day. One of the commands that God had given them that it is their day to humble themselves. So God is telling them this shall be a, st- a, a stature or a statute forever for you. In the seventh month on the tenth day of the month you shall afflict your souls and do not work at all whether a native of your own country or a stranger who dwells among you. So hapa ile wado wametumia ni ya kwamba you will afflict your soul. So what fasting does is that you are afflicting your own soul. Your own soul. Not afflicting it in a bad way but humbling your own soul. So what fasting does is that it humbles your soul. Now, do you know what your soul is? I have always been telling you, your soul comprom- uh, comprises of three things. Number one is your mind. Your mind is in your soul or your intellect. Number two, your emotions are in your soul. Number three, your will is in your soul. Now, I want you to think the areas of pride. Wale watu ambao ni proud, huh? the, the, the most word they always use is I. So it's either I want or I wish. That is within the, the will, the will. I want, I wish. I want, I wish. I want, I wish. What about in the area of emotions? Emotions are where feelings are. Well, you see, I feel. I feel. I feel like. No, no? Hello? Unajua mnaniangalia ni kama sio nyinyi sasa naonaga mkiweka hata vitu vingine kama hivi. Naona I feel it within the emotions. The other one is about your mind. Eh kwanza kama kuna kitu watu wanapenda maoni. Mimi hata ni mtu moja Kenya niliona tu amesema kwa maoni yangu sina maoni. Lakini everyone else eh, I think I think hakuna mtu atakaye kwanza ku contribute mahali I think. Kila mtu wako na Hello tupigie huyo mtu hakuwa na maoni makofi huyo ni anaonekana ni mtu special sasa huyo kwanza vile wengine wetu tunakuwaga na maoni mingi and you think and anytime you think it is your actually wewe unafikiriaga hiyo idea yako ndio inafaa ifuatwe unaonaga wewe ndio uko right i think i feel i want sasa ukiona ukiwaisikia hizo ukijiangalia sana uone unatumiaga hizo word sana tuko na kipimo ya Mungu ndio inatupimia kama we are proud or not I always tell you, never use your own measures to measure anything in your life. So today we have a true measure that is showing us whether we are proud or we are not. And especially if you do not use this measure we are given to humble ourselves, then automatically you are proud. And now we bless the Lord because you have a chance to now humble yourself before the Lord. So this day he tells them, on that day, you will afflict Let, can we see new living translation let's see this word afflicting your soul many may not understand uh-huh. you must deny yourself so when we talk about fasting is about self denial it's failing to feed on that self denying that self so he was telling them on that day it will be the day that you deny how are they supposed to deny themselves number one they were supposed to fast they were also not supposed to work that day siku moja nitakuja niwafunze how if you think you must work it is one of the ways that shows that you are proud because those who believe in the grace of god they know that god can give them even when they rest if you see someone ambaye unajua kuna kazi zingine za kuandikwa na ni vizuri tunawaombeanga mungu awafungulie njia waendelee kufanya kazi lakini mungu awafungulie njia waweze kupatikana sa lakini kuna mtu ndiye amejiajiri yeye ndiye ako na anaweza yeye anaweza funga akuje lakini ana yaga hata sahani lazima afanye kazi sasa huyo mtu mtisafute shida nyingine kwanza shida ya kwanza ni pride they think they are living because of themselves they think it is because of that work that they are doing they think that if they close on that one day on sunday then their lives zimeisha but the lord was telling them you should humble yourself you see you should deny yourself you should afflict your soul neither a native or a living among you may do any kind of work this is a permanent law for you what does NIV say? NIV. NIV. On the 10th day of the 7th month, you must deny yourself. So message version, let's see message version. Message version. Uh-huh. Thank you. 
On the tenth day of the seventh month, both the citizen and the foreign living with you are to enter into a solemn fast. So do you see the way they were supposed to afflict their soul was through fasting. They were supposed to fast that day. Give us message version. Let's read the last one, message version. Not message amplified, sorry, amplified version. Amplified. It shall be a, stat a statute to you forever that the seventh month, nearly October, on the tenth day of the month, you shall afflict yourself. How do you afflict yourself? By fasting with penitence and humiliation. Fasting and humiliation. It's like you humiliate yourself. Do you know why it was like humiliation to them? Because even if you are a king, you are supposed to come out of your throne, you put ashes, you remove your royal garment, you put sackcloth. So it is like you have humiliated yourself. You have humbled yourself. So that is how they were supposed to do. Kila mtu anaacha nguo zake nzuri, anajihumiliate, anajipaka jivu, analala chini and they move. So it is one of the way God gave them to humble them. That they may humble themselves through fasting. Because God knew man must be humbled. David is saying in the book of Psalms, uh -huh, how he humbled himself through fasting. Psalms 35 verse 13. But as for me, when they were sick, my clothing was sackcloth. I humbled myself with fasting. Mimi nina wafunza leo about what fasting will do. And nina wafunza how it humbles you. So David is saying, I humbled myself with fasting. So fasting is humble men. If you want to be humbled, fast. Humble yourself by a fasting or with a fasting. So he says, I humbled myself with, with fasting. In the book of Ezra chapter 8. Hey, tunashukuru mungu leo tunamaliza mavema tukue na a few minutes za kuomba. The Bible says, so this is Ezra. So he is saying how he organized a, 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 a fast. He is saying, then I proclaimed a fast there at the river of Ahava that we might humble ourselves before our God. So why did he sanctify a fast? Or why did he call for a fast? Why did he tell the people to fast? Can someone answer me? Why did Ezra tell people to fast? Oh, my God. Are we together? Why did Ezra tell the people to fast? So that they can humble themselves. So he says, I proclaim the fast there at the river of Ahava, that we may humble ourselves before God. So fasting is one way of humbling yourself before God. So anytime you are fasting, you are humbling yourself before God. If you are here, you never fast. Now you, you know. It's one of the ways of, of, of fasting. Let's go to the next. Uh, Daniel chapter 10 verse Daniel 12. <laughs> Thank you. Now you know Daniel fasted for 21 days like we are fasting. And we know after the 21 days how the angel came and appeared to him. So this is what the angel told him. Then he said to me, do not fear, I, Daniel, for the first day that you set your heart to understand and humbled yourself before your God, your words were heard, and I have come because of your word. So the angel is telling him, the first day you began your fast, the day, in other words, you, you decided to humble yourself. So mungu alisikia Daniel skugani ile siku alianza fast. Kwa sababu ya nini? That is the day he humbled himself. So immediately he humbled himself. The Bible says that God had him. And he released the message. So when God saw Daniel fasting, what God saw, he saw Daniel humbling himself. If he, anytime you fast, God does not just see you fasting. He sees you humbling yourself. And he is saying that humble yourself in the sight of God. And he will exalt you. So anytime you fast, he sees you humbled. He lifts you. That's the power of Fasting, it lifts you up. It exalts you. It exalts you. You know one king in the Bible called Ahab, and he was among the very evil king and the wicked king. He did so evil things. Eh? And he had a wife, Jezebel. Jezebel spirit. Jezebel. He had a, a wife, Jezebel. Now, this wife made this king to do very wicked things and very evil things. One of the evil things they did while he unleashed the worship of Baal in Israel. But now, above all else, one of the greatest things he did is killing Naboth. You know that story of the land. So Naboth refuses to sell the land to the king. But the king comes and he is advised by 
the queen to kill Naboth. So he kills Naboth. The moment he killed Naboth, God sent his prophet Elijah. Go and declare judgment upon Elijah, his wife, and the children. So he comes, and it is so interesting. If you read Kwaizo uh, Vazi, Kohapo Jew, you are not going to read. When Elijah comes, he declares judgment upon number one, Ahab, number two upon his wife, and number three upon the children. And what was the judgment? How they will all die, you see, in the city, and all of them, their blood will be leaked by dogs. So it was not a normal death. And when was that supposed to do, to happen? It was supposed to happen while Ahab was still alive. So Ahab was supposed to see his wife die like that. His children also die like that. But the Bible says that when Ahab had that message from, from Elijah, even if he was so wicked, see how he, how he responded. The Bible says, so it was when Ahab had those words that he tore his clothes and put sackcloth on his body and fasted. So he did not just do this thing, but he also fasted and lay in sackcloth and went about mourning. The next verse. And the word of the Lord came to Elijah, the Tishbite, saying, <laughs> Oh my God, see how Ahab has humbled himself before me. God did not tell Elijah, see how Ahab has fasted. I told you fasting to God is equivalent to humbling yourself. So God did not tell Elijah, see how Ahab has fasted. He says, see how Ahab has humbled himself before me. Because he was a king coming from your royal throne. Putting aside your crown, putting aside your, your rod, your staff, putting aside your royal clothes, taking a sackcloth, applying ashes, falling down and beginning to mourn. Okay. The night before then, Ahab came na alikuja akiwa na mood mbaya nyumbani. Kwa sababu nabotha mekataa kumuzia shamba. So what did Jezebel do? Jezebel came and told him, sasa wewe, do you, don't you know that you are a king? So kings were not supposed to be like that naturally. They were not supposed to be seen crying. They were not supposed to be seen in that status. So that is what provoked him even to, to kill Naboth because he was told by the wife, how can you be like that and you are king? So this time when he is now deciding by himself to lower himself down and to humble himself, he fasted. The Bible says, even before Elijah went far, God spoke to Elijah, and God told Elijah, see how Ahab has humbled himself before me. Because he has humbled himself before me, I will not bring the calamity in his days. In the days of his son, I will bring the calamity on his house. So God says, imagine how Ahab was wicked, but fasting changed. Humbling himself changed everything. So God is telling them, even if you are supposed to see all this destruction, I will not do them in your days. So you will die in peace. You will have your time and then die in peace. I will only do these things later when it is your son who is reigning. If fasting can do that to an evil person, what will fasting do for me and you who are already in Christ Jesus? Fasting. It's one of the ways of humbling. I, even if you not get anything else in this service, I want you to get this. Anytime you fast, God does not see you fasting. He sees you humbling yourself. And the Bible says, he who humbles himself before God will be exalted. Hello? That is why any time they did anything evil in the past days, and a judgment was declared upon them, what they did to be exempted from judgment is fasting. You remember like in the days of Jonah? Eh? So, Nineveh was a very evil nation. And the Bible says, hey, God sent Jonah to go and tell them, 40 days and he never will be no more. Actually, the message of Jonah was very simple. And he ended from street to street. 40 days and he never will be no more. Actually, I went to be able to repent. Ukisoma, the message is simple. 40 days and he never will be no more. 40 days and he never will be no more. 40 days and he never will be no more. The Bible says when the people of Nineveh had that, and even the king himself had that. He came from his throne and he declared a fast all over. Nineveh. <laughs> now he fast, he looked serious. See how easy fast, squeeze. Tunafanya huku, watu wanafanya. He ya kubemelezo ya two hours, three hours. Na mtu bado wanakuuliza. Pastor, kama kwa hii ya six, mpaka six. Naweza kula mkate. 
na maziwa si, si takula chakula do you know the kind of fast they declared in the days of Jonah even the little babies were not supposed to be given anything imagine a one day or two days old children that is not enough even cattle and all livestock they were not supposed to be given any food so do you know what happened in that city it just means one thing yule mtoto akikaa dakika kadhaa hajapewa maziwa ama hajapewa chakula they begin to cry and you know they will cry until apate chakula na kwa siku tatu hata pewa chakula unajua kwanza the bible ina like huwa ina like sana kurudi kwa Yesu na those two stories ya kwanza ni ya noa so what was happening in the days of noa imagine people are wicked and evil and other than humbling themselves before god they were eating they were some of the let me show you some of the things that shows pride in a great way is eating especially you are eating styles and drinking that is why unaona vilabru lazima wakuwe na open hata hii unajua chat yetu tuli transform from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light sasa kutoka hapa ni kuongezea walikuwa wameongezea nyumba imefika hapa lakini kwa sababu kila mtu wa club anataka ahisi anakunywa akiwa nje unaona vizuri kwa mlango mahali hata watu wakipita eh ni ka spirit fulani kana kuanga ka pride ndio maana hataki akunywe kama amejificha eh anataka atisa akunywe hivyo kidogo akiwa na marafiki ni spirit ya pride some of you the way you eat it does not show anything else <laughs> oh my god bwana yesu asifiwe eh hapo najua imeni kwa chini kidogo lakini unajua sasa mahubiri nayo lazima tuguze kila side hii mahubiri ni our basic ni inafai kuguze hata those basic things in our life sasa mtu aseme amina eh nasikia wale vile wanakula sio vizuri sasa hawasemi bado amen so they were eating they were drinking they were marrying they were getting married the life so anyone who is living that normal kind of life those are proud people the people who are humble they always look for some time they withdraw from eating from drinking and from such things and they just dedicate their time to god so the bible also likens that day to the day of sodom and gomorrah so those people ni bash every day ni pate after after what na after nini eh hey, najua ile dunia tunaishiki siku hizi eh hey, tunatoka sasa kama saa hizi kulitoka christmas kila kitu hata ukienda mahali eh hey, ni christmas tumerembeshwa kulingana christmas eh hey, christmas ikiishaga hivi back to school kila kitu hata matangazo yote sasa ina change hata kwa tv ni offer na vitu zote za back to school ikimalizika hivi valentine bwana asifiwe Kwani ninaongea uongo? Wewe unajua hata hisa hata kuna watu wameanza kurembesha kulingana na Valentine. Yes, eh hey, Valentine ikiisha kisa. Yaani tunaishi dunia yenye inakuonyesha yani ni pate after pate. Yaani baada ya kufanya hii bash, lazima mtoke kwa hiyo bash na date za the next bash. Hello. Mimi sitaki niingilia watu wa road trips, lakini road trips sio mbaya. Lakini sio lazima ukienda road trip, lazima mkiachana sasa hapo ndio mpange sasa. Unaona hako kala fulani ka ka ka, ka eh? kwanza huyo mtu anasema si ndio time yangu mimi ni msichana eh kabla niolewe na kwanza nasikia watu wakiolewa eh hey, hey, let me enjoy myself while I, I, I am young hello ndio maana the young people waliambiwa you humble yourself very much bwana Yesu asifiwe kama uko hapa na uko kwa group yenye hajezi katoka kwa bash moja kama haijapanga date ya bash nyingine Hey, by the spirit of god i tell you to get out of that out of that group ama sasa muache sisemi watu wasishereke lakini sasa kuna katrend kingine ukikaangalia vizuri naona hapa <laughs> hello eh hey. siku na watu hata especially young people walikuwa wameamua kabisa wa support wa jakoya uh, ashinde wa jakoya alikuwa amesema akichaguliwa working days ni taki peke yake Unaona? So Tuesday, Wednesday, ilikuwa ni gani na gani Minister Anthony? So zingine zote anasema ni shere? Eh, na so many young people especially walikuwa this is our ndio na to understand. Kwa sababu wengi wao hata mahali wako either shuleni ama wako mahali. Yeye kutoka Thursday eh 
atarudi saa vizuri tuesday ndio kichwa sasa inaanza inaanza kurudi normal kidogo sasa hiyo ni pride na ukaage ukiangalia jirani yako uone vile ana sasa the bible talks about her how they never repented and because they humbled themselves before god god forgave them second chronicles chapter 7 verse 14 but we can begin verse 13 there's another scripture that all of us know all of us know thank you so this is god who spoke to the children of israel he was telling them when i shut up heaven and there is no rain or command the locusts to devour the land or send pestilence among my people so he is saying sometimes because of your sin and your iniquities i may shut heavens you see and cause those plagues but he tells them if my people who are called by my name number one, eh nataka tusome hizi vitu zimekuwa listed hapa eh 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 mwenye anamaliza kuandika amalize then we read nataka tusome macho yetu yote iko kwa screens eh if my people who are called by my name number one, will do what number two, number three, number four, then what will god do i will Uh, si tusome tukiwa pamoja i will eh eh so god is saying kama uko hapa ndo unasema bingu yako imekuwa imefungwa acha kwenda kwa watu wa kukufungulia bingu na unajua wanafungua bingu wengine kulingana na bei kama um, uko na dhao bingu inafunguliwa kubwa bwana hizo asifiwe the lord is saying if if i shut heavens and if these things come upon you if my people who are called by my name number one, shall humble themselves and how did we see what is the thing that humbles men fasting if they humble that is why any time kulikuwa na destruction ama imetangazwa ama judgment they they fasted because god had told them if you humble yourself if you humble yourself then number two, if you pray so fasting na praying zinapelekana and then they seek my face so when you are fasting these are the things you do you pray you seek the face of god and number two, na, the other one is that you turn from your wicked ways imagine mtu ana fast na hiyo siku ame fast bado anaendelea na his wicked ways so the bible is saying if you fast you also turn from your wicked ndio maana alikuwa anauliza walikuwa nasema they are fasting lakini bado wanafinyilia wale watu masikini so he was asking them is this the kind of fasting i want because some people just think fasting is just uh, failing to eat if you fail to eat and then you continue with your with your sinful nature then that fasting will not have effect or impact in your life so these four things must apply number one, as you fast it is a way of humbling yourself you must also pray you must seek the face of god and then you turn yourself from your wicked ways then i will hear from heaven so If you do those four things God will do these ones he saying number one, I will hear from heaven I will forgive your sins and I will heal your land verse 15 Now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to prayer made in this place my eyes will be open my ears So in other words the heavens will open once again So kama uko hapa na unasikia ni kama bingu imefungika fast humble yourself He is saying that you will open the heavens for he will open his eyes and his ears and he will hear your prayer so in other words i mean one of the ways of god hearing and answering your prayer is you humbling yourself through fast that is why sometimes ina onekana ni kama tu fast mungu anasikia sana kushinda wakati wote si ati ni kwa sababu ya ni kwa sababu when you humble yourself when you humble yourself god opens his eyes towards his ears towards fasting opens the heaven that is why also when you fast you will notice that many times you will hear god clearly you will get revelations and uh, you, you you can even get prophecies very easily when you have fasted it's very easy to get a revelation and knowledge ukisoma bible kama umekula ugali vizuri ukashiba see the same na wakati umefast wakati mwingine utapata ni kama unapata more revelation wakati unasoma ukiwa fasting because the heavens are open for you for you have humbled yourself you have humbled yourself in the book of acts chapter 13 from verse 1 it talks about when paul and other five or there were five all of them they were teachers and prophets and they were in a place praying the bible says now in the church that was at antioch there were 
certain prophets and teachers, Barnabas Simeon, with, or who was called Niger, Lucius the Syrene, Manain, who had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. So they were five. Saul alikuwa pamoja na wao. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, Now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. So as they ministered to the Lord and as they fasted, the Holy Spirit spoke. The Holy Spirit will always speak to you when you are fasting. He will always speak to you. One of the things I was telling those people you are with in the first service, anytime I declare a fast like this one, the Holy Spirit began to speak to me even before I began fasting. Because like Daniel, the Bible says, the, the first day you decided, even the day you decided, God hears you the day you decided to fast. So here, as they ministered and fasted, the Holy Spirit spoke. You are here, you want God to speak to you first. Do you know why we always fast at the beginning of the year? So that God may give us the direction and the guidance for that year. Because any time you pray, the Holy Spirit will speak. And the Holy Spirit does not speak, does not just speak for nothing. He speaks to give you guidance. He speaks to strengthen you. He speaks to guide you. He speaks to direct you. He speaks to lead you. Anytime you want the Holy Spirit to tell you concerning anything, or you have anything you are inquiring from God, before you come to the pastor to inquire, fast, and the Holy Spirit will speak to you concerning that issue. Pray, fast, and he will speak to you. You see? So as they fasted and ministered to the Lord, so the Holy Spirit spoke to them. Verse 3 says, Then having fasted and prayed and laid his hand on them, they sent them away. So he fasting haikuwa siku moja. Inamalizia, na sasa nikama naelezia the kind of fasting tutafanya. Number one, this was a corporate fasting. Kuna two kinds of fasting. There is the personal fasting, ni hile unamue mwenyewe, hile siku na unafast. Na hiyo we mwenyewe ndia huamua pia rules na laws za kufollow kwa hiyo fasting. Kwa sababu ni your own personal fasting. But there is what we call corporate fasting. Corporate fasting kama hizo tumesoma kwa Bible, wakati kulitano wa hitha na mfalme, ama wakati kulitano wana kama Ezra, akawambia wa fast. So hiyo waki fast, ni nyote. Na kwa hiyo ya fast ya corporate, you don't use your own rules and laws. You use the rules, like when the king of, uh, of uh, Nineveh said that for three days after watoto wa spiritual chakula, everyone had to follow that decree. So anytime you are praying as a team, you don't pray or you don't fast the way you want. You fast the way it has been directed. So in this fasting that you'll be having for 21 days, you do not fast the way you want. You fast the way it is already set. Kama tuko pamoja inua mkono. So, nasio hii, anytime utengia kwa fast, yenye mmeingia mkiwa wengi, mmeitua kwa fast. Fuata vile muna fast na wao. Sio venyewe unataka. But anytime now you want to do your own fasting. Now, whether you want to, to do it ya yeah, one day, ya yeah, one hour, ya yeah, two days, ya yeah, seven days. So that is up to you. You can maybe decide what, what to do. But a corporate fasting, that one, you must do what you have agreed as a, as a team. Someone say amen. Now, the next thing about the corporate prayers, like this one, you must have, lazima mfuati ya ile goal, ya ile, unajua mwe sema hii ni corporate prayers, na kila mtu anaomba tu vitu zake, hamna a place, a common place, manaomba pamoja. So number one, kama ndiyo mana, kuanzia leo kuna prayer points, tunatuma na hata leo nilituma prayer points, and I'll be sending prayer points to you every day. Kama uko hapa na hauko kwa wa WhatsApp group, make sure you, 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 see minister, see your leader, your departmental leader, make sure umiongezwa kwa, hatuta kwa tunazitumia watu personal kwa inbox, tunaziweka prayer points every day for the 21 days, so that even as you pray, ukiombea, hatuta ziweka zikiwa nyingi, tutakwa tunaweka like three or four prayer points peke yake, so that you may also have time to pray for your other things. But those things ambazo tumeweka hapo, make sure if you are participating in this prayer and fasting, unaziombea hizo, fuata prayer points, hiyo siyo maombi yako peke yako, ni corporate prayers. Ni corporate prayers. So you must also follow the prayer points. Ama the goal. Ama the direction. Ambao inapatiwa katika hayo maombi. Bwana Yesu wa sifiwe. You know he said that this is our year of doing unusual things. Extraordinary things. Manifesting supernatural things. If you have to, so, to manifest supernatural things. One of the things you cannot avoid is fasting. Because it is when you are fasting when the heavens are open for you. You can now download from the heaven and manifest those things on earth. 
We read in the book of uh, Acts 19, 11, of how God worked unusual miracles by the hands of Paul. It is among our very main scriptures for this year. How God will work we, by our hands, mighty and wonderful things. But you must also, if you want him to do the things he did with Paul, also to also do them with you, then you must become like Paul. So here Paul and the other five men, they were fasting. And even after the Holy Spirit spoke, they continued to fast. Nasio hiyo tu peke yake, actually ukiingia the next chapter, wakati sasa wameanza kwenda kuhubiri njili, utaona like in the next set walienda, wakati waliombea watu wakaokoka, unaona, the Bible says, eh, 14, Acts 14, wakati walienda waka, watu wakaokoka, the Bible says, they also fasted and prayed, na waka appoint leaders, or the elders of the church. Hawa kufanya hivyo bila fasting. So Paul was the a pastor of prayer. So when they had appointed elders in every church and prayed with fasting, they commended them to the Lord in whom they had believed. Fasting. So ilikuwa ni tabia yao kufast. Apostles, they used to fast. Now, why do you want to do the things that apostles did, but you do not want to fast? How is that possible? And they fasted oftenly. Now, many of you may ask me, how often should we fast? You should fast oftenly. Paul was saying in, uh, in the book of uh, uh, Corinthians that he used to fast oftenly. Oftenly. He used to fast oftenly. Uh, can we read this verse? Ndiyo verse yetu ya mwisho kusoma kwa maubiri ya leo. Na ningependa tusome tukiwa wote. 2 Corinthians 11 verse 27. Can we read 1, 2, 3? Ah, apana. Hata ah, kama imeanza na weyari nesusi yanze kama uko weyari. Hello. Eh ni yetu ya mwisho kusoma. Hata wale sasa mlikuwa mnasinzia, sasa fungua macho vizuri, tusome hii, alafu sasa ndiyo tuombe. Ah, 1 2 3 and toil and in sleeplessness often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness. Na ukisonga hapo mbele utaona alikuwa anaelezea yale mambo alikuwa anapitia ama alikuwa anafanya. Alisema ya kwamba he spent many days in weariness. Go back, I said that is the last verse we are reading. In weariness and in toil, in sleeplessness. So many times he did not even sleep. He toiled. He was weary. Alafu wanasema in hunger and thirst. In hunger and thirst. Alafu wana specify, ndiyo wangine wanyu msifikirie fasting, ni hunger and thirst. Hunger and thirst ni wakati umekosa kukula kwa sababu hauna chakula. Fasting ni wakati huko na chakula, lakini umechagua kukosa kukula, uka abstain from food. So he is saying in fasting often. Na kwa nini kwa fasting ameongeza often? So he used to fast often. Sasa wale mlikuwa mnasema fasting ni ya Old Testament. Hata Yesu ministry alianza na fasting. True or false? Yes, eh, na tukaona akifunza wanafunzi wake how to fast. Kwa ni angewafunza how to fast kama fasting haiko ya siku zao? Na hapa tumeona how Paul used to fast. And they continued with the apostles to fast. And he says that I fast oftenly. So he must also fast oftenly. So even after these 21 days of prayer and fasting, we will fast oftenly and will not get into hunger strike or hunger and thirst. No, but we are going to consecrate ourselves. Zaza, kama uliko na andika, andika hizi la inimbili, I want us to pray. Na hapo ndiyo ningeanza, lakini tunashukuru mungu ndiyo tamalizia. What is fasting? From whatever we have learned, you can say number one, fasting is ab- abstaining abstaining from food from food from food for spiritual purposes your second part is very important usiweke ya kwanza tu abstaining from food it is abstaining or abstaining sorry from food for spiritual purposes so unakosa kukula for spiritual purposes in other words so that you may you may have time to pray time to read the word of god and that you may have time to do those, those, those other things. Spiritual things, not carnal things. That is the first one. Uh-huh. The, the next one, I'll say, fa- a fasting, a fasting, it, it is a time of consecration or separation. Consecration or separation. It's a time of consecration or say, separation. Where you take or you shift your attention from yourself to, to God. 
So it's not just consecrating yourself or separating yourself, but it is with the purpose of shifting the attention from you. you know, and you direct that attention to God. So it's abstaining, abstaining from food for spiritual purposes. So you are turning away from something towards another thing. Towards another thing. Thank you. Now, after writing that, you can close. You can close your books. We we are we are good. But there is something. The last line I want to explain it to you a bit. So you can just close the book and then listen to me. Kama saizi unaona ni naangalia. Sieta ni mnaweza ni angalia back. You 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 look back at me. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. So. Kwa nini wakati ninasoma scripture I have to turn lakini sio just turning to nothing but I am turning now to read on the screens. So when you are fasting you don't just look away from food but you look away from food with a specific intention and the intention is for spiritual purposes. You don't just separate yourself for nothing but you separate you separate yourself sorry and to God. So in other words it's like disconnection to connect. I am saying that because some of you may just fail to eat but you are not it's not for spiritual purpose. So we are disconnected from food to connect ourselves to spiritual things. We are denying ourselves it is the area of humbling you are denying yourself things so that you may give yourself other things. So if you are fasting ukose kukula chakula ya kimwili na ukose kusoma neno hakuna kitu umefanya. It is abstaining from the physical food for spiritual food. Sawa so, minister Anthony. It is separating yourself from things so that you may give your attention to God. So during the time you are fasting, number one, lazima ukwe na time ya kufeed na neno la Mungu, enough time to read the word of God. Number two, you must create time to spend time with God, fellowship and intimacy with God through prayer. So you must have times of prayer. I know many of you six mshatoka mmeenda kazini. Wake up early in the morning. Mimi nataka niwasaidie because fasting without praying will not help you. I better tell you the truth. So in those days, make sure you have times of prayer. Either wake up early in the morning before how you always wake. Have at least one hour of prayer. One hour of prayer. You can do it at night kama hiyo ndio maybe before ulale kama kwako ndio ina work vizuri wala uko na time chana but make sure kwa hizi 21 days you every day uko na at least one hour na kwenda juu ya prayer that is how that fasting will be will be effective that's how the fasting will be effective in fasting we do not only abstain from food sasa mwingine ame fast alafu hiyo ndio siku tu Hakuna kitu kingine wewe isipokuwa chakula haukukula chakula ya maneno ya huko nje hiyo utakula vizuri bado utakuja upewe mambo wewe tu ni chakula ya, ya nini ya haukukula lakini bado maneno tu uta, hata wewe ndio utaendea unaona kama vile mtu anaenda kwa hoteli kukula kuna watu wanaendeaga maneno hivyo eh eh hey, hata anapiga huko hey, ana ana sasa u au abstain kutoka hii chakula ya mdomo peke yake ya kukula na mdomo hata sasa mambo kama hayo unaweka kando. Eh, hey, wakati umefaa sio the time ya kuona soap operas and everything. Hiyo ni time ya separation. Sasa time ya tumesema unaacha the kind of things for spiritual things. So ile masaa unatumia kuwatch hiyo soap. Kwanza hapo najua dada wengi waezi sema amen. Tumia hiyo time ingia YouTube angalia Pastor James Mbarikiwa. Tafuta mahubiri yote tu. Ama sio hiyo, ama hata mahubiri ya mtu mwingine sikiza, soma neno. Sasa hiyo ndio fasting. Itu ya kukosa ku alafu series usiku mzima Hello it's not fasting Avoid kuongea na watu sana during those times of fasting Umefunga macho na masikio wacha kuona watu na kusikiza watu ndio usikie Mungu By the way unajua wengine wenyu ile siku unaweza acha kusikiza watu wengine wenyu ni very easy kusikia Mungu E, lakini ile makelele iko kwa masikio hata ukikaaga hivi chini tu hata wewe mwenyewe ukianza kukumbuka zile vitu zinakuongelesha zile maneno umesikia but any time god want to speak to you must you must become calm you must be still the bible says be still 
I know that I am God. Hello? Mimi ninawapatia wisdom ya fasting. 